day two of our EOG review. If uh, if I counted correctly, we should get 22 or 23 days of review. For today, what we're focusing on are calculator inactive stuff. Uh, so to start with, order of operations are on the calculator inactive. Our order of operations, you know, we follow our PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? Uh, so it's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So for this one, we got to do the parentheses first. In our parentheses, then we have an exponent. So we got 3 to the third power, so that's 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So, you know, we still have our 6 squared plus 27 minus 5 divided by 2. We keep going inside the parentheses. So we got 6 squared plus 27 minus 5 is 22 divided by 2. So parentheses first. Once we have the parentheses, now we keep going. Next is exponents. So 6 to the second power is 6 times 6. That's 36. Then we still have our plus... 22 divided by 2. This is the part sometimes where people mess up. The division has to get done before the addition. So we got 36. 22 divided by 2 is 11. So then when we add, it gives us 47. Now, any questions on that? All right, so the other types of problems you can see, we got multiplication, we got pairs, in this case cost is $1.78 per pound, Carl bought two and a half pounds of pairs, how much money did he spend on pairs? So this is multiplication, we're going to have multiplication of decimals pretty much guaranteed on your inactive. So all we need to do, like I said, multiply, $1.78 times the 2.5 pounds. We multiply it just like the decimals aren't even there. So 5 times 8, 40. 5 times 7 is 35. Add the 4. 5 times 1 is 5. Add the 3. Put a 0 in. 2 times 8. 16, 2 times 7 is 14, plus the 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1, and then we add. That is not our full answer, though, is it? We have to put the decimals back in. All right. The way we put the decimals back in is by counting the number of digits after the decimals for the whole problem. I've got the 7, the 8, and the 5. So that means my answer needs to have three digits after the decimal as well. So we just count 1, 2, 3. That means the decimal would go between those two 4s. So my answer to that would be that there this is money he's buying pairs right so money we're gonna have two decimal spots that would be our correct answer on the ones where you're typing it in when it's not multiple choice you know we don't put the dollar sign on it though right, any questions on that one pretty much can guarantee you'll see one 
similar to that on your EOG. Other things that you can see a lot of are the ones like this, where you got some mixed number and you got to divide it up, usually by a fraction. Sometimes it's like taking a board and cutting it up. Sometimes it's like this where you got a recipe. So we got Carl has four and a half cups of sugar. Baking cakes that require four cups of sugar. How many cakes can you bake? So like I said, this is dividing it up. You're taking the four and a half cups, dividing it into three fourths. So we would have to start with, that's the problem we're doing. When we have a mixed number, what do we have to do first with the mixed number? Make it to an improper fraction. So denominator times whole number plus numerator. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 gives 9. Denominator stays the same. Got divided by 3 fourths. When I divide by a fraction, what do I do? Keep change flip. So the 9 over 2 stays. Division changes to multiplication. Second fraction flips. Then when we multiply, straight across the top, straight across the bottom. 9 times 4 is 36. 2 times 3 is 6. One where you type it in, that's probably going to be good enough, unless it specifically says to simplify. However, that's easy to simplify. That's just division, right? So what's 36 divided by 6? So that means Carl here could make uh, six cakes. Any questions on that? Like I said, if I were betting on it, your gridded response, or the ones where you type it in, going to have one like this where you're dividing up a mixed number, going to have one where you're multiplying out usually with money. What do I do on this? What do you say? Distribute the 7. All right, so when we distribute the distribute property, what type of math do I do? Multiplication. So you're taking the number next to the parentheses, in this case the 7, and it gets multiplied by both parts. Okay? So 7 times 2x, we just multiply the numbers. 7 times 2 is 14, still has the x. 7 times 6y, 7 times 6 is 42, still has the y. And that's it. This type of problem usually will be like a multiple choice one. Either it will give you the part I have here in purple and ask you which one is equivalent, or it'll give you with the parentheses like I have in green and ask you which answer choice is equivalent to it. And you just have to kind of check by distributing correctly. Any questions on that? Distributive property is pretty easy as long as you remember what to do. It's just like it's multiplying. Another thing that's fairly easy as long as you remember what to do are these reflection problems. So we got an ordered pair, 3, negative 4. It's reflected over the y-axis. We need the coordinates after the reflection. So it's been a couple months since we did this. Anyone remember what happens? Not quite. It doesn't completely mirror both numbers. All right? So she's close. She said, you know, we change the sign basically on each of those numbers. It becomes negative 3 and positive 4. That's not quite it. Nope. 
Yeah, so when it's reflected, whatever axis you reflect it over, that one stays the same. So remember, our ordered pair, x first, then y. Right, so we got x and then y. Since it's a reflection over the y-axis, y stays the same, and my x value changes signs. So, you know, we're pretty close with the idea we were going with. Not quite there. All right, so whenever you got a reflection, whatever letter it reflects over stays the same. Other letter changes signs. Okay, like I said, not any math to do on that, really. It's just something to remember, okay? Any questions on that one? 